Hi, I'm Andy. Today I'm dressed as an 1840s pioneer out here in DuPage County, and we're going to learn a very valuable skill, which is candle making. So if you've ever been uh, burning the candle at both ends, you know how important it is to have a good supply of candles nearby, uh, provide nice light for you. Uh, but how do you get the candles? Well, one way is to make them yourself. Uh, today we're going to show you a very simple method for making candles. This is known as candle dipping. Uh, so, we've gotten started with our nice fire here in a nice safe fire pit. Uh, we have a very piece, important piece of equipment here, which is our fire bucket. Uh, so in case there is uh, an outbreak of fire, we can put it out. And you'll also see it serves a useful purpose later. So, we have our fire going. Uh, next, we need to get our wick. So, we have our wick here, just a um, little piece of string. You can get special made wicks for this purpose. They work the best. Uh, and we have tied it to the end of a stick here. So it's important that it's long enough you're not burning yourself. Um, but we're going to get started with our wax. So we have these big chunks of candle wax. Um, you can get that as well. The premium type, of course, is beeswax. And I do have an example of that as well. So this uh, smells the best, uh, burns the brightest, um, is the best to use, but also the most expensive. And then I do also have an example of the least expensive. This I do not recommend, but here we have some beef fat candles. So they look kind of gross. The light is not very good. Okay, so of course you're welcome to use any method that you like to, to heat up your wax. Uh, but since all we've got here is a fire and a little can, that's what we're going to use. So we're going to stick it in a good spot in the fire. Now comes the exciting part of waiting for the wax to melt. Uh, as it is melting, we do actually occasionally have to add in some more wax. Uh, the goal is to fill up the whole can so that we can dip our wick into it. So if you have a nice uh, big pot and you have a nice long stick, you can do multiple wicks. Today I'm just keeping it nice and simple. I have just one here. So you want to soak uh, the bottom of it for a little bit. Have a nice thick base that helps uh, the wick to sink to the bottom more easily. Today I'm using a nice um, stiff wick there, so it's not too much of a problem. But if you're just using a little string, you might have difficulty with it floating on the top. So you dip it in. And then remember the fire bucket from earlier. This is where it comes in for its second use. You need to cool off the wax. Otherwise, it's just going to melt off again when you put it in uh, the hot bucket of liquid wax. So that'll cool it off. We'll wait for a little bit and then dip it back in. Ooh, I think our wax is a little hot today. So you keep doing this uh, for as long as, uh, for as thick as you want your candle to be, or for as much patience as you have. Ooh. So we've reached the level of a very sad birthday candle now. Uh, but I want something that is at least thick enough that it'll stand up on its own or in a candle holder. So, gotta keep going. So we're starting to get pretty close. I feel confident that this candle would stand up on its own. Provide about a, a good amount of light. And there we go. So, let's take a look at it. Looks pretty good. Still a little bit soft. Um, so you got to be careful not to bend it into interesting shapes unless that's what you want. Uh, but we'll let it cool for a little bit. Uh, then we just cut off the top and you're all set to go. So there we are. Turned out pretty well, all things considered. 